It is now Friday evening. My printer refuses to work over time, so then I have no choice. That's why I、uh, wrote down this question. Now let's take a look at this question, though. Using the bound enthalpies, determine the approximate enthalpy in kilojoules for each of the following reactions. Let's look at the first reaction. In order to solve this problem, first we need really to see the structure of、uh, those molecules. Okay,、uh, one of the reactants actually, you see the H three, the three hydrogen right here is this three hydrogen, and then you have the carbon. Carbon, that's actually those two carbons. Then this H is this H, okay, and then after that, you see there is a double bond. Double bond is between carbon and carbon. So, okay, the second carbon and the third carbon, and then this hydrogen is attached to the carbon, and then there is a. Another methyl group, so so-called methyl group, that's a CH three. Okay, so therefore this is exactly that molecule, the structure of that molecule. Okay, hydrogen of course just two H, and then this molecule CH three, that's this CH three, and then you have a CH two. You see. That's a CH two, and then another CH two, CH two, and then carbon carbon in between. That means just single bond. If it were double bond, it would be、uh, indicated like this one. Okay, and then this is the last methyl group, CH three. Okay, so this exactly is that molecule. Actually, this molecule, everything is with a. Single bond and、um, uh, four carbon. We call that butane. T A N E. Butane.、Uh, N means normal. Okay. So when later on when you learn organic, you would learn more about、uh, the nomenclature there. And this one, there's a a double bond, and two means the location of the double bond. That's carbon one, carbon two, three, four. So that's why we call that two, butene, T E N E, T E N E. Whenever you see a T E N E, that means there is a double bond, carbon carbon double bond in there. Okay. So knowing the structures, it's easier to solve this problem. So now, ah,、uh, we just need to use a.、Uh, One of those two key equations to solve the problem. Both are actually exactly the same equation. Okay, in order to calculate the、uh, data H of reaction. Okay, the first equation is the sum of bonds broken plus the sum of bonds formed. When you use this way, you want to make sure. The formation of bond always release energy, exothermic. That's why if you use plus sign right here, all of those data H's here has to be negative sign with negative sign. Okay,、um, maybe it's easier for you to use the second equation. So that's、uh, the sum of bonds broken subtracted by. Some of the bonds formed, but when you use this equation, you must always use the positive values for data H. You see positive values of data H, and here's the subtraction. So, therefore, that's actually is a、uh, you know a set of value subtracted by another set of value. All right, and here, so plus a set of minus value. Then that also means actually 
that just becomes this equation. So therefore, they are the same. Don't be confused. So uh, whichever is easier for you, most people probably it's easier to use the second one. Okay. So in this particular reaction, not all bonds are broken. Are broken, you know. So uh, let's take a closer look. You see, in butene to butene, actually only this carbon-carbon double bond right here. Only that one is broken. Okay, nothing else. All everything else still the same. And for hydrogen, is this hydrogen hydrogen single bond is broken. So therefore, the bonds broken for the reactants is this a uh, carbon carbon double hydrogen hydrogen single. Okay, and now you see the ball the bonds formed. Okay, this double bond is broken between C2 and C3. Now, a single bond is formed. So therefore, formation of bond for the product, one carbon-carbon single bond. And then, look at here. Since this bond is broken, one hydrogen is attached to carbon-3 forming CH bond is right here, this one. And then the other one attached to C2, this is C2, and that's this bond. So therefore, two new carbon hydrogen bond bonds are formed. Okay, so now we have our bonds broken and bonds formed. We just need to use these very few bonds to do the calculation. We don't need to use all of those broken and everything here. Uh, the formed bonds, we don't need to do that, okay? So now, let's uh, start working on the numbers. One carbon-carbon double bond broken. Okay, so that's the carbon-carbon double bonds uh, uh, enthalpy or energy, 6, 1, 4. Then also 1, H, H, single bond broken. That's a 432. And of course, everything here, that's bonds broken. And then subtract by the bonds formed, all right? One carbon-carbon single bond, which is here. Two carbon-hydrogen single bond, two times. And this is the CH bonds value. See, subtract it by the sum of everything within the parentheses. Of course, this group does the bond form. So this is the equation two I mentioned to you a while ago. And you can simply get this uh, 127 kilojoules as the answer. That's the correct answer. Even though so far we have already solved this problem, uh, but for our students who are interested in uh, chemistry and would like to learn a bit more. Uh, so I would like to uh, point out this structure I drew here and also this one. Uh, strictly speaking, they are incorrect. What do I mean they are incorrect? So incorrect, I mean this does not really show the three-dimensional orientation or arrangement, okay? So based on the molecular shape, remember, uh, for this carbon item, there's uh, four uh, uh, bonding electron groups, and that should be the molecular shape, should be tetrahedral. And this one, uh, yeah, yeah, so 
So this one, of course, we don't those right ones, okay, with a double bond. That three units, and then that should be without long pair, trigonal planar, and so on and so forth, all right? So there's no way if you use to build, if you really use a model, you know, use a um, marshmallow or toothpick and toothpicks or whatever, you know, if you don't have the real uh, chemical uh, models, so you can build that, and you will see those four carbon, they will not be actually um, in a straight line because of the tetrahedral or trigonal planar geometry. As a matter of fact, you see, in this case, carbon, 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 carbon. You see, that's not 180 degrees, okay? And here, same thing, carbon, 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 but still that's not 180 degrees, okay? So therefore, actually, here I just told you, it's just simply called um, tour building, but actually that's not specific enough. Actually, there are two structures. There are two different structures of this molecule. One is this one we call that Z2 butane. Z actually comes from the German word zusammen. Zusammen means together, which means you see hydrogen, hydrogen, or on one side of the central two carbons, and then the end carbon, they are also together on the other side. So that's why we call this Z2 butane. And this one, you see, this methyl group or this carbon CH3 group on this side of the double bond, and then this one, this CH, is actually on the other side. So we call that E2 butane. E means also a German word, Entgegen. Entgegen means opposite. 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 Okay?